morning, Guam. <laughs> How do you follow right that? <laughs> morning, everyone. You guys what got is? a dragon on uh, Monday. Just uh, a little, but I got my bit. coffee, so right. yeah. it'll kick in pretty quickly. You got your coffee. Sorry. <laughs> hey, uh, thanks for we starting your day. <laughs> the KUAM way, it's our starting lineup, and one day we do a morning meeting where we kind of tell you guys and all the um, competition out there what we're going to be working on <laughs> this week. <laughs> They're all standing there like, oh, yeah. Right there. Today we got uh, the governor's, uh, was it a monthly address now? Right. Yeah, so it seemed to me, I just got to read it, read it briefly, just an update on yeah. what our administration's been doing with collecting uh, taxes and going after people who are delinquent, what the police department's doing in terms of hiring uh, police It's kind of like a catch-all yeah, speech. Yeah. That's a lot of speech. There. Yeah. Oh, so. I'm following up on the uh, power outage yesterday, uh, which, you know, not unusual that we have power outages every once in a while, but this one in particular was... You know, usually it's the, the snake. Right. Because okay. yesterday was a cat, so. Right. I know, Ooh, you sent a, me the picture. And yeah, I, I thought like, it was fake. Uh, this? It looked like Chupacabra, <laughs> right? So I was like, whoa, is that Chupacabra? <laughs> and so we got a message into to uh, GPA to get details on that, you know, and how that happened and who was affected. Maybe the cat was chasing the snake. <laughs> Perhaps. But I just thought it was unusual to have, instead of the usual snake, a Cat this time. Yeah. Well, interesting point, just to throw it out there, but uh, my power went out once because a rooster flew up onto the uh, power line, oh. and, uh, and it, it blew up the, the transmitter, and it fried was, chicken. Fried yeah, it was a loud explosion <laughs> of fried chicken, and all we needed was Finny Denny. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go, GPA, it doesn't yeah. have to always be the brown tree snake, yeah. right? Hey, well, this weekend, right, you you went to the My Green Jam. Yeah, I hosted it actually yeah. on Thursday and Saturday. Saturday was awesome. Palau 3Ks are a fantastic band, Fat Tofu, mm -hmm. awesome band. Uh, they play all originals. The crowd was, was great. It was, it was amazing. Um, Setup was really nice. Yeah. yeah. It was fresco, like, all yeah, the days that I was breezy. there. Breezy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was nice uh, that it wasn't uh, it moved to the Plaza de España, so that's pretty cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then I heard public health was out there shaking people down, too. You know, <laughs> they do that a lot. Yeah. Oh, this is the, the food booths? The yeah. public health Nazis. Yes. <laughs> That's a job, you know, yeah, food yeah, inspection, yeah. keeping us safe. Uh, GCC's got something interesting today. We're yeah, going to go right. up to, uh, they've got a uh, ship repair um, boot camp. Mm -hmm. which is kind of interesting find out what that's all about because if you recall back in for, la for the last 50 years from i think right after the war till mid 90s 97 i think mm -hmm. uh, one of the best employers on guam was the ship repair facility yeah. i think at one time the entire village of san marino was mm -hmm. employed at the ship re repair Makes facility sense. but yeah i mean it was great jobs um you know the, those folks um great salaries and, yeah absolutely and then, right. yeah. And then BRAC happened the uh, base realignment and closure commission and shut that, that down so a lot of those folks had to find other employment at other ship repair facilities in the states and i think a lot of them are still there yeah, i have some friends who went to barstow um, oh. pacific northwest a bunch right. of uh, chamorros are up there and uh, so that would be interesting to find out what, what that what what they're doing what a boot cap is for are they foreseeing some kind of opportunity mm -hmm. for the maybe with the back? marine or build up or Whatever, maybe yeah, that's possible something. too. That'd be great news. I mean, so there still know. is a ship repair facility, but it's like a private one. Right? Yeah, and it's much it's scaled smaller. down, and yeah. yeah, it's not quite what, what it was. It'd be great to see that industry come back. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I mean, Guam is perfectly situated. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It, uh, and uh, we have the facilities, obviously, because we operated. Well, the Navy operated one for mm -hmm. 50 years right after the war. So who knows? Gita has been trying to get into uh, pushing the cruise industry, so that that might go hand in hand if that comes to fruition yeah I'll be following up on the uh, homeless so I did a homeless story last week right. on Friday um, <clears throat> and so uh, Ray Tapasnia went out with uh, Lieutenant Governor Josh Tenorio they met with the Lieutenant Governor um, Green in Hawaii mm -hmm. and so they were discussing the homeless issue there and so they were looking at maybe what we can kind of model after them and so I've got some statistics and we'll be putting that out yeah, yeah. so I got to go cruising with uh, Josh Lieutenant Governor Josh Tenorio and that was a big part of our conversation and I was teasing him I was like well you get to go to Hawaii to look at the homeless problem <laughs> 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 no but he he said there was just so many uh, different takeaways mm. uh, and then interestingly enough uh, one of the things he pointed out was uh, the largest uh, sector of Hawaiians uh, Hawaii's homeless population is Micronesian mm. to include uh, Chamorros Ch there was a Chamorro oh, interesting. yeah interesting so, but he also talked about illegal dumping, right? He did. So we talked about a bunch of different things. Uh, we talked about Pride Month, uh, illegal dumping, and I, I, you know, I'm, 
He said we're on the same page. I was like, look, LT, I think that it, we're at the point where the government needs to, like, I mean, yeah, I know it takes a village, but the government needs to bite the bullet and get out there and let's just clean it up and step up the monitoring. You and know? they did. They did and it so over the weekend. Yeah, so he so said that we're on the same page, and that's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the legislature's got some confirmation hearings, some interesting topics that will probably come up with uh, Franklin Leon Guerrero, who is oh. for the parole board uh, replacing, I guess. Michelle Titano will be the outgoing, um, and there was that controversy <laughs> involving the release of that uh, one. Uh, and uh, I think the medical examiner's yeah. board has an appointee, so we still don't have a medical examiner. Yeah, so, that's um, uh, that's been quite a problem. That's I mean, interesting. The AG's been trying, and uh, right ever since that's been all the task force. Stop. <laughs> medical examiner, task, task force. force. Yeah. You, you know, the, the other thing I'm I'm looking forward to see is resolution to the whole Menengen. Uh, memorial and property dispute. I think there's another meeting scheduled this week with uh, land management and right. uh, the Mesa family. And I know you've been following that story. Yeah, uh, you know, man, he was getting eaten alive in the Facebook comments. Uh, basically, people are saying, oh, it's a money grab, <coughs> and how could you keep the Mononco and the, you know, the memory of these, uh, you know, the Menegan marchers and the, everyone who was interned there at the <coughs> camp. How could you hold that hostage for money? And the family has said that, um, they're gonna block off, uh, you know, access to the memorial. So the memorial itself is landlocked, and then I guess from what this family says, everything around it uh, belongs to them. So they're very willing to just block access to the monument. And Stephanie Flores up at the governor's office has been tasked with overseeing all the memorials, and she said that there's just no way that they could fast track uh, compensation. There's a whole process that they gotta go through. And then she also mentioned uh, the idea of a, a parcel swap. So while this family seems uh, pretty stubborn or you know pretty fixed on getting a financial compensation, I mean it would be kind of a an interesting curveball if they got some parcel somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And you know I I've been talking with Rosanna Villa Gomez, and you know so far the memorial is still it's on. Yeah, July seventh yeah. they're gonna have the memorial, um, an Engen memorial run, which KUAM will be participating in. Right. And uh, the ceremony it's gonna be a little different. Um, I think they're just having. The ceremony is at 10 as opposed to usually it's a little later in the afternoon and um, have a non-denominational uh, memorial service there and I think, uh, I think that's it it's it's a lot condensed and a lot shorter so that's why I was kind of interesting interested to know like what was the yeah and it's also interesting because uh, we talked to Mark Colby who uh, is representing certain parts of the family but there are, I think there are about nine or ten different uh, siblings that have a stake in this property and so Stephanie Flores said that they're talking um, to direct heirs so mm -hmm. it's got to be one of those things where you know everyone's got an opinion about what to do and so that's probably making the resolution of this issue uh, even more difficult you know, since we're talking about liberation, we want to invite our viewers from off island to send us uh, your video messages about liberation wherever you are. Um, just one minute clips, messages uh, on Facebook, just half a day. I'm the Cruz family from San Diego um, celebrating liberation. It's important to me because of this, whatever your reasons are, and just be the Guam. Yep. And we'll be running those on um, the stations of KUAM. Cool. There's just so many facets to the, the liberation story. Like my grandfather was part of the Guam Insular Guard, and mm -hmm. uh, these were uh, people who later on in their lives were basically declared honorary Marines and able to get the veterans' uh, benefits. So my grandfather never actually served in the technically in the United States military, but he was part of the Insular Guard, and they would go around and uh, look for stragglers and uh, you know the Yakois who didn't get to hide off for 20 years. Yeah. That's, That's an amazing like, story. Yeah, mm -hmm. crazy. <laughs> I, I still can't believe it. Yeah, and there's that part, and there's just so many different uh, mm -hmm. aspects of liberation. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so hey, that's what we're working on uh, for this week. Hope you enjoyed this uh, morning meeting. On behalf of the team, uh, check us out tomorrow for a group chat. We're going to have definitely something interesting for you. <laughs> that means I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that means if you got something going on, get a hold of me, and we'll get you on the show tomorrow. Okay? You just implied that everything we talk about